I had a chance to talk with Steve Merrifield of Hampton University, the man behind the most famous hug in college basketball history. Welcome back to another edition of the 68 Shining Moments. My name is Rob Doster, part of the Field of 68 Media Network. I am excited to be joined today uh, by a member of Creighton's coaching staff and the former Hampton head coach, Steve Merfeld. Steve, how are you doing? Thanks for being with us today. Uh, great. Great, uh, great to be here and, and looking forward to visiting with you. So we have you on because of the upset that, that your Hampton team pulled over number two seed Iowa State in 2001 and there's plenty I want to get to into about the game itself but uh, first I have to ask you this the the picture of you getting picked up with your arms in the air and your feet in the air by I believe it was um, David Johnson is is maybe the most iconic image when it comes to kind of the uh, the darlings of the NCAA tournament and and March Madness and Cinderella's and all that so I'm curious like what is it like to know that 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 image of you is going to live on forever every March we are going to see that clip see that picture see that video what is that like? In a lot of ways, um, it seems like it was yesterday, but in a lot of ways, it seems like it was 25 years ago. Um, You know, obviously a a great moment for Hampton University. The crazy thing about that whole deal, Rob, is I remember none of it. It was like I was in a a different world and, and absolutely remember nothing other than you mentioned David Johnson. I can remember David Johnson like it was yesterday saying, I got you, coach. I got you, coach. I got you, coach. But other than that, I don't – some people thought I was going to do a cartwheel. I couldn't do a cartwheel to save my life. So w- when he picks you up like that, what, what's going through your mind? I don't remember. I, I Honestly, I, I don't remember anything. I remember uh, – you know, obviously I remember Tarvis Williams making the shot and then uh, Tinsley dribbling down through the middle of our defense and Tarvis meeting him at the rim and the ball bouncing off and – at the time, the uh, horn at uh, the arena at Boise State was not working, so they were using one of those foghorn type things. And I can remember that going off. And after that, I don't remember anything um, until, like I said, I can remember David saying that to me, but I don't know where I was or what I was doing. <laughs> That's great. That's great. All right. So when you see that picture and when you see that highlight, what 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 is going through your head? What's going through your mind? Like, what are, what are the memories that you feel and the feelings that you feel when you see this, this pop well, up? Well, obviously very, very special, uh, you know, to, to take a team like Hampton University and, and pull an upset like that, um, you know, was very special and, and a credit to our guys for sure. Uh, but, yeah, it, 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 it's heartwarming, you know, to see it. And, and as you mentioned, you know, every year CBS seems to put it back in there, uh, which certainly brings back good memories. I actually – got a text from Tommy Adams, uh, one of the guards on that team last night, you know, talking about there was something that somebody sent him, you know, as tournament time comes. Uh, so great, great moments for all of us. So let's go back to the, um, before the tournament actually happens before the game is played. The bracket is announced. You guys draw Iowa State in, I believe it was Boise, Idaho. Um, so you're going to have to fly all the way across the country from Hampton to, to Boise. Uh, what's What's going through your mind when that when that bracket gets released? Are you like, all right, we're in the tournament? It's like, man, we got to go to Boise. <laughs> I'd say the first thing was um, we were totally excited to be in the NCAA tournament. It was the first time Hampton University had been there. Uh, we didn't care where we were going, how we were going to get there. It was just a matter we were in the tournament. As the week went on, and as we got videotape of uh, Iowa State. I believe Baylor upset them in the quarterfinals um, of the Big 12 tournament at that time. And as we watched the tape, we had a really good feeling that we could beat them. Uh, and, and we had a very confident group. I mean, you know, we went on and, and beat them and then lost to Georgetown the next two days later. I'm telling you, our guys thought that they were going to beat Georgetown too. They were that confident of a group. So to answer your question, as the week was leading up, we didn't feel overwhelmed uh, by the matchup. Uh, obviously Iowa state was, you know, one of the top teams in the country and they had played great all year, but it, there was just something missing at that t- time of the season for them. And, you know, every team has a, a period where they're not playing their greatest and, and it was Iowa state at that time. And we were fortunate enough to get that draw. So I've seen you mention that in, in a number of interviews that you guys were, were really confident and, and thought that you could go out and win that game. Is that just, you know, a byproduct of the competitiveness? Was that that specific group? Was it because you knew that, you know, you had a certain level of talent on that roster? What, what was it about that team in particular that made you think it's like, okay, we can go get this done? Well, the, they they just totally believed. 
you know, that they were going to do that. I mean, we had some good non-conference wins along the way. We played very, very well in conference play. Uh, we had a couple of fifth-year seniors uh, on that team that had been through it. Sean Howard started out at Syracuse. Marseille Brown started out at Richmond. Uh, both had played in the NCAA tournament. And there was just a feeling that you got confident. That, and, you know, as, as I get older and, and observe college basketball and watch, this game is played so much on a confidence level. And, mm-hmm. and especially with this generation, allowing them to, to have that confidence and to bring out that confidence is so important. And, and we were feeling that at that time. So you guys were up at the half. You played really well in the first half. Uh, Iowa State jumps all over you at the start of the second half. I think it was a 9-0 run off the bat, and they they pushed their lead to, I want to say it was 46-35 with like 11 minutes left or something like that. Was there a point when you were like, oh, man, we blew our chance. We had it, and we blew the chance. <laughs> yeah, th- th- there definitely was, and uh, I think it was a little later than that. I, I want to say it was around the 7- or 8-minute mark. We went to a triangle and two. And it was something that we had practiced. And, um, you know, obviously Tinsley uh, was was very good. And um, they missed some shots. We made some plays. And all of a sudden, we're right back, you know, in the thick of things. And it just – I think that triangle and two made it – caught them off guard a little bit. And, you know, when, when you're down 11 with 10 to go or whatever it was, uh, you're going to have to have a lot of things go your way. And we did. But we also created a lot of those things um, – you know, out of the confidence and the, the uh, it, it was a very, very skilled basketball team that we had at that time. We'll get back into that interview in a minute, guys. But before we do, let me just tell you about our partners over at DraftKings Sportsbook. With March Madness beating down our door, DraftKings is the best way for you to get a little action in on the game. If you have not downloaded the DraftKings Sportsbook app, what are you waiting for? It's the safest, it's the most secure, it's the most reliable, and it allows you to safely deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. I know, I use them. And this week, they are offering my listeners a pretty sweet deal. If you sign up now with the promo code FIELD68, you can turn $1 into $100 if one of the main event fighters in UFC 259 this weekend lands a single punch. That's it. One punch to turn $1 into $100. That's a pretty good deal if you ask me. And don't worry, if MMA is not your thing, DraftKings Sportsbook offers odds and promos on basketball, on hockey, on whatever sport it is that you are watching. But since they're basically giving away $100 free dollars, you might as well sign up now, watch a little UFC, and remember to use the promo code FIELD68. That's FIELD68. You must be 21 years or older. Offer available for a limited time only. Eligibility restrictions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. So I want to talk about that last baseline out-of-bounds play where you got Tarvis the uh, – I don't even know if I would call it a jumper or a jump – the, the shot to win the game. So it looked like you were um, – what ha- I'm, it looked like you were running to get someone a shot in a corner, um, but there was a miscommunication at some point with Iowa State because two guys ran with – I forget who it was. They kind of left Tarvis all by himself. So, like, what did you draw up? What were you looking for? And then when he got the ball, were you like, oh, wow, all right, that worked out. The irony of the whole thing is we took a timeout. Uh, it was our last timeout, and we ran a play that we saved for that moment, um, and they kicked it out of bounds. So now we have no timeouts left. So we just went to our basic bread and butter play. And, you know, this was how that team was built. You mentioned it. Cleveland Davis broke to the corner, could have jacked up a shot, might have made it, might have missed it. He passed it to Marseille Brown, who was our point guard and creator. And he didn't flinch. He got the ball where it was supposed to go in that specific set. And Tarvis rose up and made it. I mean, it was it was kind of amazing. Um, that both those guys, Cleveland Davis and Tarvis or uh, Marseille Brown, uh, just did what they were supposed to do in the heat of that moment, and that's why that team was successful. They believed in each other. So the uh, th- this was definitely one of those moments where going the other way, Jamal Tinsley gets the ball, slices through everybody like you would expect a, an NBA point guard to be able to do, gets to the rim, lays the ball in, and it does one of those spin around things, and then just kind of hung on the rim. Do you 
Do you re- remember that? Like, what were you thinking when the ball was just sitting there on the rim? Were you like, please fall, please fall? Were you like yeah. trying to wave the air? Were you blowing yourself? Like, what was yeah, it? Yeah, again, I, I can remember it uh, for sure. And like I mentioned before, I remember the blow horn going off. And, and you know, this is unreal, you know, is, is my feeling. But, you know, as he got to the rim, Tarvis Williams was there uh, to distract him. Tarvis led the nation in shot, uh, block shots both his junior and senior year. So uh, I'm sure Tinsley, you know, felt a little bit of that, but it's probably a shot. I mean, let's be honest, it's probably a shot he's going to make eight out of ten times. And uh, fortunately, it, it rolled around, as you mentioned, and, and fell out, and, and the celebration began. It's amazing how close some of these things are. Like, if that ball just happens to fall the other way, you know, like the, how different is, is your life? Right. How different is Hampton basketball program? Like it, it, it's, it's a, you, you know, they say it's a game of inches and, and that's kind of a cliche and it's kind of annoying when that happens, but like it's kind of a game of inches in a lot of, in a lot of senses. Well, a hundred percent, Rob. And that that's, you know, I'm just very, very thankful for Hampton university and our players. Um, you know, as you mentioned, without having that success, you know, I didn't play college basketball. I, I'm kind of an outsider in that regard where does my career go, you know, from there? So hundred uh, percent correct in that um, it is a game of inches. Um, and, and sometimes you're on the good end of it. And sometimes you're on the bad end. So I'm always curious about this, right? You pull off this amazing upset. It's an unbelievable moment. It's, it's something that you're going to remember for your entire career. And then, you know, you still have to go play Georgetown in like 48 hours or 46 hours or whatever it is. So at what point do you, stop the celebration and start looking forward at what point do you say okay that moment's gone now we got to keep it moving we got to forget about what just happened like i, I gotta imagine that right there is the hardest part of pulling off an upset because you want to be able to celebrate it right but like, you also have to start getting ready for your next game yeah you, you know you have to enjoy it for sure and and i can remember uh telling our sports information director patricia at that time because you know as you have an upset like that everyone wants to talk to you and and I just said, I'm, you know, you're going to handle all this. I want no phone calls. Um, and she did a beautiful job of that. But I do remember uh, one of my, probably my, my uh, mentor from college and like a second father to me to, just said to her, no, no, you don't understand. I am going to get through and I am going to talk to him. So put me through. And, and uh, but, but she did a great job of, of um, uh, holding the media off. And, get, you know, I, I think I went on CBS the next day or something like that but there we get focused back on Georgetown and and as I mentioned before Rob they thought they were going to win and it was a very very similar game uh, to the Iowa State game where we're right there the crowd is behind us now the place is rocking and uh, you know about that same eight nine minute mark uh, they pulled away and and uh, uh, we never recovered from it, but you know, I thought our guys played great as well. We just do. They were just so big and strong. So I'll, I'll end it with this. Um, how often do you get asked about this game? How often do people say, wait, are you, you're the guy from Hampton. You're the guy that was picked up right. by his players. And, and how has this kind of changed? Uh, has it changed anything in like your day to day when it comes to, you know, just kind of how you, you go about your day this time of the year, for sure. You know, because um, as we're doing right now, everyone wants to, you know, hype up the tournament and, and make the most. And, and there are great moments uh, throughout it. Um, you know, we at the time where I think we're the, maybe the fourth number two seed mm-hmm. um, at that time. Now there's been more since then. Actually, there's a number one seed that went down. Uh, so a lot of that attention is not on me anymore. It's, it's focused on other people, but, but I enjoy reliving it. Um, you know, every once in a while you'll, you'll, you know, a basketball junkie will, you know, you've been introduced to somebody and they'll say, Steve Murphy, what, what, what do I know that name? And all of a sudden it'll come to them and they're like, you're that guy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's still there. And, and uh, not, neither of my my daughter was born at the time, but not old enough to remember of it. My son was not born. So they get a kick out of their dad acting like a fool every once in a while as well. Well, I got to say, there's worse legacies to have than, hey, you're that guy, right? Right. right. <laughs> right. No, it's... Uh, it's part of the part of March Madness and uh, certainly um, happy to be a part of it. Well, listen, man, I appreciate the time. Thank you for hanging out with us. And uh, for people that are watching this, you're actually doing this right before a game. So good luck today. Go get that win. Hope you beat Nova. I appreciate that. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> <laughs>